Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Hey Man, I'm Josh. And I am Jacob. We are in Royal Oak, Michigan. Across the street from the Chicken Shack. Um, and you guys know that whenever we go to a new city, we like to find a local studio and record an uh, episode of the pod here. Yep. And so we are at, what's the name of this local studio? We're at Executive Studios here. This place is super dope. So if you're ever in Royal Oak and looking for a spot to record, yep. they have a bunch of different rooms, but this is, uh, yeah, man. It's I, fancy. I, I love I like it in here. Yeah, me too. And I like traveling around and seeing other people's setups. Yeah. I'm excited. I, I will say I'm excited to see what our setup is going to look like at the end of it. Yeah, you know, our setup is so close to being done. We had a little snafu, um, but the guy who was setting up the podcast room <laughs> moved out of Vegas. <laughs> so I'm kind of weird. Th- what a weird thing to do. And be like, yeah, I'll take your job, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm kind <laughs> of, uh, I'm kind of just halfway. He's a good guy. I'm not going to, but like, uh, it definitely slowed the train yep. down a little yep. bit, but I have my art picked out. Most of my art picked out from my side of the wall. What about you? That I do that. We can put up, that's all set up. So you can come over. You just got to tell me what you want to do. Okay. I still haven't decided if I want to do. So this has, which I like, one two shot and then singles on each side yeah so a three camera yeah yeah so do you think i should go three three camera seems like it's the most efficient yeah for sure because okay. they're all stationary stuff and they have their light set up and yeah once you're in your spot that shot is there do you know what i'm saying yeah and it's easier it might be harder for the edit because it might be hard for them to cut in between three different cameras but it'll look the cleanest yeah maybe that's what we'll do um but listen first of all Royal Oak, you sold out every show. Five shows. Yep. If I sound a little tired, I took some mushrooms last night. And he was up till probably about 4 a.m. Um, Friday Night Late Show has turned into my mushroom show. <laughs> Yo, last night. <laughs> Which I still just don't even understand how you can do. I love it. You did, you did two hours last night. Yeah, listen. Also, if you're coming to the mushroom show, just know that it might run a little long. Yes, it not might. Will. Yeah. Will definitely run a little long. It, yeah. always, it always does. Yeah. Your boy doesn't know how to shut up. <laughs> you, <laughs> you also, for some reason, always forget your phone when you go up there. So you have no yeah. idea what time it is. That's a problem. Because I do, I can talk forever. They really should have a clock that we can see. I can talk forever. So if I, if I don't have a, I honestly had no idea how long. I mean, about an hour and a half in, I was like, let me tell you the bachelor party story. <laughs> And that is a 30 minute story. It, I mean, last night it was. Yeah. But I will say, man, nobody leaves. Yeah, which is unless they have like prior engagements yeah. or like a kid and a babysitter. Yeah. Like, and we understand that, by the way. Like, if you have something to go do and, you know, you have a life outside of this show that you're seeing, that's fine. Like, go do what you need to do. But the fact that not a single person left through that two hour show, not more than two hour show because it was just you for two hours. Yeah. Is bonkers. You know, I, I, and, and by the way, I just have to say with incredible and the show in Grand Rapids on Wednesday was fucking nuts. Some of the most energy mm-hmm. we've ever gotten from a crowd. Um, but I, I just have to start by saying just how grateful I am to all of you who are coming out to the shows and not just coming to the shows, but bringing such crazy energy. Mm-hmm. So just huge thanks again. I'm super grateful. Um, it, it is, man, the mushroom shows are a great way for me to find new material. And also I make them real interactive. I take a lot of questions from the crowd. Yeah. So it's been a ton of fun. Yeah. I didn't, I don't think I heard you do other than the bachelor party joke, like a joke. Like a, uh, uh, yeah, no, I kind of took questions and I tried a bunch of new stuff and just to see where my brain was at, you know? Right. It, is it was so all over the place. Yeah. yeah. It was very over the place. It was on every single wall. Yeah, man. And I'm also, the amount of people that come out with their kids, like a- adult kids, like 18 and 21 and 25-year-old people. Or even older than that. Yeah, like, coming out with their family and, is yeah, amazing. Mom and her kid last night, the kid was like 35. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it, it was amazing. But we've been having a great time, so thank you all so much for uh, coming out. I, you know, and the meet and greets have been, we get, the, look, you guys know I like weird shit. And so uh, in Grand Rapids, we had a, a woman 
say, I guess I can squat. I bet you I can squat you. And so she put me on her shoulders and squatted me. It was yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She was in good shape, though. Like, she looked like she could have, not going to lie, She's, probably beat the shit out of the rest no of us. No doubt. She's she was like, she was like 6'1 and just jacked. Jacked. Strong. Oh, good lord. Strong woman. Yeah, she definitely squatted me. But, you know, it reminded me, you know, you know why, you know, like grown people, you know, when you're a kid, you do piggyback. Yep. And piggyback is fun and you play chicken and piggyback. Yep. You know why you don't play piggyback as an adult? Dick in the back. Well, yeah. You, no, there's no pause. Yeah. It's straight dick in the back. Like they, that's, I think you hit a certain age. You're like, oh, your dick's in my back. We're not going to do piggyback anymore. Yeah. I, I, if I got to be honest, I'm not even really thinking about that. You would if you had a grown adult male on your back with his dick in your back. I mean, I've given a friend a piggyback ride before. As an adult? Does t- like 20 plus count as an adult? Yeah, dude, that's an adult. Then sure, yeah. Yeah, no, it, that's all I can think about is that like, this just feels dick in the back. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, well, if that's the case, and you had your dick on the back of her neck. Because you were on her shoulders. I, I thought she was going to like put you like a barbell. <laughs> Over your shoulders. Like, I didn't think she was going to have you, like, get on I her shoulders. I didn't think she was going to, like, fire uh, yeah, me and carry me. I thought she was going to do that and not put you on her shoulders like she was your mother. Like, <laughs> she, like, she sunned you, dog. That was crazy. Yeah, you know what? She Like, she was my date at a music festival, and she just put me on her shoulders so I could see Green Day. Yeah, yeah. You she just I mean? sunned you real quick. Oh, it, it was crazy. But she, I, I loved it. Um, you know, there was a kid there for his 18th birthday. He asked me if he could hold hold me like a baby for the picture. Yep. Fun. There was a 15-year-old who told me I was his idol, and I was like, that's really nice of you. But Yeah, uh, but we, I, I do like the weirder things in the meet and greet lines, and so um, we definitely get some uh, some weird stories and some weird poses oh, yeah. and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So that was been. But the, the I had never had anyone squat me before. Yeah, but I thought, I mean, you never had anybody, like, pick you up like a baby until you had that seven-foot woman from the East Coast pick you up. On stage. She did it on stage? No, the one that meet and greet after the show? That you ginor- about in Boston? Yeah, that ginormous woman? She came up on stage and picked me up. Oh. Yeah. That might have been, must have been, you were like, yeah, you can't be that tall. And then she got on stage. That's and you right. Were like, I said, how, she was like, she was talking about how tall she was. And I said, how tall are you? And she said, can I come on stage? I said, yeah. And she stood up there. I was like, yo, you're large. Legit. Yeah. Big person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like that stuff, man. And I and I like that that people feel comfortable enough around us where they just feel like, hey, this is, I'm going to show you some weird shit. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, cool. I mean, you invite it, though. So. Yeah. That's what people know coming to your show. They are, if they have something weird, that you're open to it. So. Yeah, remember that dude? He took off his leg and had to sign it. Oh, yeah. This dude had a prosthetic leg, and he took it off at the end of the show and had to sign his prosthetic leg. Yeah. He said, what's the weirdest? Up until that point, because he had asked me, he said, what's the weirdest thing you've signed? And I said, somebody took their arm off and had me sign it, and he just unscrewed his leg. He's yeah. like, what about this? I'm like, yep, that'll do. It's hilarious, because when you, somebody, I think if somebody had asked that during the Q&A, when we were on stage. Yeah. And he, you said that same thing. And this, I looked around and this dude, I literally saw him in the crowd just do this. Yeah. He held up his, and he held it up like it was a trophy. And he was like, sign this. He held it it's up crazy. like John Cusack holding up his that boom box. Yeah. <laughs> Except it was his fake leg. Yeah. It's pretty for, amazing. For me, it reminded me. Do you remember that episode of SpongeBob where they find that giant pencil? I'm going to stop you right there. I don't remember any episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants. Pants. But I, you remember Scooby Doo? Yeah, man. I don't remember specific episodes. Let me tell you what I used. But if I were, but you, you didn't let me. There's, there's, there's certain, there's certain other things to it. You, you know, he finds a pencil at the bottom of the ocean, and then he draws like another SpongeBob, but he's called Doodle Bob, and he runs around. And he just screams, "Mioi, mioi!" You ever seen that? No, dude. I'm. A, you, listen. No. I don't say you're a grown person because I'm a grown person and there are other grown people who remember that episode. I watched SpongeBob with you guys. Yep. But more as a way for me to take a nap while you guys were watching cartoons. I don't I wasn't paying attention to SpongeBob. Maybe you pay attention to Family Guy and Archer. Yeah, but that's different. I'm high at night and I think it's funny. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. You remember like when I used to take you guys to movies. I didn't take them so I could watch them. I took them so it was a quiet indoor place for me to take a nap. 
Did you sleep during the movies? Every fucking movie we went to. Like which he, ones? Here was the rule. The rule was you and Kate would sit in this chair and I would put my hands on both of your legs like this. Mm-hmm. And I would tell Trevor, hey, nobody gets up, nobody moves. If either your brother or sister move and I don't notice, you gotta let me know. And he was like, cool. And so he would watch you guys and I would keep my hand on you. And Kate would like to get up and move seats. And I had to tell her. But I yeah, I used to use, you know, if you're a single parent, um, you've used the movie and in like a the movies at the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I would just put on Nemo or Toast Toy Story and just go to sleep. And let you guys watch it. That's fair. Yeah. I, mean, I understand that. Yeah, dude. I, I was looking for sleep wherever I could get it. Yeah, I, I still am not on board with you not watching the like wanting to watch, you know, an animated movie though. Not right now, man. I I, I no. Nah. I'm on mushrooms. You I'm should mus- watch Ratatouille. On mushrooms, watch Ratatouille. You might cry. Really? It's emotional. It's emotional? Yeah. It's a lot of life lessons in Disney movies, man. They're trying to teach kids things. But not, you've never seen that movie Inside Out, right? I'm not a kid. Doesn't what mean you, lesson, doesn't what, mean you still can't learn anything from a Disney movie. How do you know? Well, that's a good point. I can't poo poo it. Exactly. Don't knock it till you try it. That movie Inside Out is like learning on how to deal with your emotions. I will. I will pick one for me that you want me to watch. Ratatouille. Okay. It's like literally. Uh, yes, right away. I will watch Ratatouille. I'm sure it's on Disney Plus. Oh yeah. I will watch Ratatouille. This week. Great. When we get home, because we have the week off. Week off, yep. All right, I'll watch Ratatouille. Do not fall asleep. I will... Oh. Watch it earlier. Do not fall asleep. Is Patton Oswalt the voice? Can I tell you one thing? I don't thing? know. Can I tell you one thing Patton did to me once? We were both playing... I forget if it was Fox, Foxwoods or Mohegan Sun. And um, he had his crowd... <laughs> chant this is the rumor that i heard from somebody at the show so it could be it could have been fucking with me it could not and by the way i'm not insulted by this or i think it's funny that he would do it and and i know some people would be but he had his crowd chant to see if i could hear it from the other club josh wolf sucks <laughs> or isn't funny or some shit like that. It's an alpha move right there. Yeah, dude. It's, it's an alpha funny. move for a straight beta dude, which I really respect it. Yeah, pretty funny though. Yeah, I, by the way, I find him to be incredibly funny. He he's his humor is so different than mine. Am I tripping that I don't can't remember who Patton Oswald is? I think I know that I know that name. You would know him if you saw him. Okay. You would know him if you saw him. Mr. Patton, I'm sorry I don't know what your face looks like. Yeah, dude, you would you would know it. If you would look at his face and you'd go, oh, yeah, I, I recognize that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like saying Meg Ryan nowadays. Yo, take it easy. She's just a little older. Is Patton all older? No. That's but, why he has no excuse for his face to look like that. Patton, but, bummer for you, bro. You know what's crazy to me? You bring up Meg Ryan. And I, when I saw a picture of, of her at the Michael J. Fox thing, I wasn't like, I was, I didn't recognize her. Right. And, but, but like, I do think it's so funny. Like I saw somebody posted a picture of Jack Nicholson. He was at the Lakers game. He went to one. He's at, what do you mean at one? He's at every Lakers no, game. No, no, no. He hasn't been to, he's missed like a year. He's oh been, really? Yeah. He's been, I think he's been pretty sick or just getting old. Got know? it. But he was at one against Memphis. I think maybe. And somebody posted, he looks old. I'm like, he's fucking 80. Yeah, he let, is old. Let the dude get old. Now I say this as somebody who's getting old. And so I, he's like, leave, he's like, leave us alone. Yeah, man. On the live the other day, somebody were like, you look old. I'm like, yeah, dude, this is what happens when years go by. Yeah. Gray, you know what I mean? I still don't have one gray pube. I think Con- that's going to be huge. Congrats, bro. Listen, I don't mind if my face looks old. I don't want my dick to look old. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants an old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not like you, you or your wife. No, dude. You don't. When you drop your pants, you don't want it to look like your Gandalf. Your, your di- <laughs> you want to look like Gandalf the Wizard with his nose Gandalf peeking the out. Gray. Yeah, dude. You don't want it to make it seem like your dick makes this noise. 
Like that is not what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah. I think, and I would do it mostly for your mom. I think I would, I and I, because I'm not dyeing my hair anymore. Would you dye your pubes? I think maybe. You know what? I think, okay. You know what's crazy? I guess we'll find out in a couple of years. Here's what bothers me more than gray hair in my face and my hair. In my, my head or my face. Gray hair on the arms. Gray hair on the chest. And gray hair on the pubes bothers me more than this area. You have gray hair on the chest. I do. I thought you did. Well, I'm going to pluck that fucking thing. Is it more than one? <laughs> we'll have to find out. <laughs> I don't stare at myself in the mirror, so I don't really. I feel like I did see a couple. What? I might have to just get the whole razor out. Make, I... you, more, make you a little more aerodynamic. I'm not shaving my chest like a dolphin. Why not? I like Michael Phelps. I don't want to look like a. I'm, I don't want to look like a dolphin. You're not gonna look like a dolphin, like you just said. You don't even take your shirt off. People won't even know. Yeah, but I'll know, and it's itchy. But it I'm, is. It is itchy. I'm gonna pluck that gray hair. You had a gray hair in your face. You thought I did. You 100 percent did. You noticed that I didn't shave until yesterday, right? So when you saw me the very following week, you're like, "It's not there." And what I'm were like, What were they? What were they then? What were those gray hairs? They were reflected off the light. Do you remember how bright that light was in that room? How come it just was one here and one here? It seemed too good to be true that they were symmetrical. There was no way that that was just random and it wasn't caused by the light. Have you had any gray hair in your head? Yes. I had my girlfriend and mom pull out like three next to each other. Like they were all like squatted up. That's because... (laughs) I was like, yeah, get them the fuck out of here. Like... Well, listen, man. I mean, you have dark hair, so but the real thing that matters is that you get a full head of good looking hair. Yeah, I'm gonna have hair for a long time, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully forever. D- does 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 like what what would bother you more? Bald, or would you rather just be have all your hair but just be a little jiggly? Wait, 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 wait. Let me just, let me clarify what you're asking here. Are you putting both our shoe games up? Yeah, I, I keep switching my legs back and forth. So, yeah. like, I have to, you know, figure out. Whoa. Don't worry. I didn't, I just hit the Whoa, the whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, don't touch the shoes. Relax over there. You're not going to go bald, I don't think. I, mean, I don't think so. Eventually, maybe. I mean, yeah, when I'm dead. But, like. Whoa. I'm trying to have ha- I'm trying to have hair for the rest of my life. Grandma and Grandpa both still have hair. I think I think the way you judge if you're getting the bald gene is your mom's dad. I think is how it gets passed down. So my mom's dad was bald when he was 25. Well, straight up bald. Well, I only met my biological mother's dad once, so. But I think Papa Sop. I think that was his. That's what he or whatever his actual name is. Yep. I, but I think he had a full head of hair. Great. Yeah. So I think you're in good shape. Winning. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. So I think I'll be all right. But so well, let me clarify on that question. Would you uh, you ask if I would rather be bald and ripped, or a full head of hair and a little extra weight? Not a little extra, but like bald, big boy. Well, I don't know. Because I feel like you can still like I feel like if I'm fit and bald, it's, it can still work in my favor. I bet you if you asked women who they would rather No, that's a fifty fifty two. It depends. It's all, but it's the thing, like that's all personal preference. I think I think ooh, I think full head of hair is is something that's important. I would agree, like definitely, but you know, if 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 those, although de- depends if those, on the shape of your head too, right? But also, if, yeah, because if your head looks like an egg, you're in rough shape, right, dude? If if you're bald, and together, also, are we talking? Are we talking straight bald or like a little like stubble? Yeah, dude. By the way, we talking mean, we talking Paul together? Are we talking Adam? Are we talking Adam Wolf? I, well, you got to shave it down up to you, but I I think I'd go Paul together. Yeah, because look at Paul; he's a double amputee and he's fucking can jacked. bench like four hundred pounds. Jacked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, you go Paul together. Shit, if I could look like Paul together, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I don't blame him. And he's Australian? Get the fuck out of here. That's quite an accent. Quite. Oh, that man is winning at life. Um, One thing I wanted to get to, but and I know we started talking about it, and as usual, we've ADD'd off. But that weird things that happened in the meet and greet, a woman asked us. Oh, 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 yeah. 
tell them what they So asked this us. was at the Grand Rapids show. Yeah, after and the show, yeah. After the show, and someone, a woman had come up to us, and she goes, hey, I got a question for you. Do either of you know what a penis hanger is? Now, before we answer this, let me just say to everybody, you know, when we ask in the Q&As, when you come to the shows, you can ask us questions like this, too. This is fun to answer. Yeah. The, but it was like the woman in Utah who asked us if we knew what a, what was? Um, what, what'd she ask? It was some BYU shit. I can't remember. I forget, too. Something about a chin. Doesn't matter. Something about a chin. But the, the penis hanger. She said, do you know what a penis hanger is? I had no idea about this. I thought it was like a clothes hanger you put on your dick and you can like hang a piece of like clothing off of it. That's yeah. like, a, like a bragging right. But bite. it was like an exercise. So I guess some dudes hang weights yeah, it's like off you, it's, of their yeah, junk. Yeah, it's like you strap it to like your genitals and you can strap the other end to something that of 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 significant weight and lift it. And lift it. So you're trying to, I mean, I don't know. But like, here's the thing. I don't know any dude who's working out as a dick like, like. Or, but like, why? But why? why? It's like that's I, what I'm saying. It's like, like it, a it kegel, but for dudes, it hey, doesn't make no, no sense. It, zero sense. Yeah. Like uh, for me, I'm thinking about it. Like it has to be some sort of like weird fetish thing. Did you Google it? No, I know you did though. <laughs> I, I I know you did. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I know you for sure did. And I know if I went on your search history, <laughs> right above poop and pool, there would be penis hanger video. So, you know, it all yeah. just depends. I'm a sucker for anything that I'm like, what is that? Yeah. Why do people do that? I, I'm, I'm, you know, more fascinated, honestly. I'm less fascinated with the thing itself and more fascinated with the people. First of all, when, when you're doing something out of the ordinary, and it's way out of the ordinary, right? Right. My, I, I'm so curious about the steps you took to get to, to that get point. there. Yeah. Like, what was the first move, and how did we end up here? That's the kind of shit that I really like. Because they, he, you know who, how they ended up at Penis Hanger, uh, Rock Bottom. That's how. Yeah, dude, Rock Bottom was my nickname in high school. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Bummer for you. Yeah, that's right. Because that means you were the dude that the, all the, the girls went to when they were at their lowest self-esteem. I mean, listen, beggars can't be choosers. I was not, I was not, I was not popular really with Neither was I, girls though. in high school. Neither was I. You weren't? No. You weren't popular at champs? With girls? It just maybe it seems from your, from the parental point of view. Yeah, it could seem that way, but mm, not really. No? No. Do you, I forget. To, I just had a lot of friends. I forgot to ask. You did have a lot of friends. I forget to ask you this, man. Do you, as far as your childhood, I'm going to ask you two questions. Can you think of a decision that your mom and I made that you still disagree with that you just didn't think was a good move? And can you think of a decision that your mom and I made that as a kid you disagreed with, but looking back, you're like, that was a, probably a good move. Um, I can answer that second one first, and it's the transfer schools. Oh, you hated us for transferring you out of that school. Yeah, I did. But it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Why don't you explain to me what we're, what we're so talking about? So I was first at a private Catholic high school called Notre Dame in Los Angeles. Uh, and it's where I wanted to go my entire life. We lived down the street from it for 10 years. And I went to middle school right down the street from it. Yeah. So we would drive past Notre Dame every day to get to middle school. And I told myself every day, like, that's the school I want to go to. Um, I want to play baseball. I want to do this. I want to have that, like, TV high school experience. And yeah. I feel like Notre Dame is going to give me that. It did give me the TV high school experience, but not the experience that we all wanted. It was the... Uh, you were on the bullying end of it. Correct. Yeah. I was on the uh, I was on the other side of that. Yeah. Um, and it was rough. And so after two and a half years, second semester of my junior year, my parents transferred me um, to a school called Champs. Now, in all honesty, Champs was my choice. Like, they were like, why not go to Grant or go to this or go to that? And I was like, I want to go to Champs because that's where all my friends from middle school are. Mm -hmm. And that makes the most sense for me because for my senior year, I don't want to have to re-meet the entire school. You're also making it sound like you wanted to make this change. This was not a change you wanted to make. Right, but I knew that if I had to make the change, I, I picked the school. Yeah. I remember saying, look, if you're going to make me do this, can I at least pick where I go? Yeah. And they said yes, and I said champs, and they said why? And that's exactly why. I didn't want to have to re-meet my entire class Dude, you, senior year. You didn't talk to us for like five days. Yeah. 
No, I didn't. I was either we, out of the house or in my room playing video games. When we trained, we were like, you're transferring. And um, we, you were like, why? And, and honestly, dude, if I'm being completely honest with you. Your mom really was the one who pushed us across the goal line. Right. She was just like, he's not. At one point, she was like, I was like, he's going to be fine. He needs to figure these things out. My, I was thinking, like, we can't just rescue him. If he's getting bullied or whatever, you know, there's going to be times in life where people are going to not going to be nice to you and you got to figure your own way out of it. And she was like, look, this is not going to be good for his confidence. It's not going to be good for how he sees himself. And he's not working his way out of it. We've given him enough rope. It's not working. It, she was like, we have to move him. And so I was like, okay, I'm with you. Like I, I was not anti it but i really wanted to see if you could work yourself out of it and she yep. was just like it's hurting his confidence and his self-esteem and let's not do that anymore yeah and she was 100 percent right she was 100 percent right yeah yeah so that's one that i look back on it and do not regret or i i am thankful for at least um and in the moment you were like look at these assholes pretty much yeah and for a good amount of time even though you weren't enjoying your time at the school. I was dating a girl also, though. Like, oh, and, like right. and like, I had a girlfriend right. who went there. And then also I had a group of friends that I had known since my freshman year of high school. That's like, right. Like I said, I if I went to a completely random school that wasn't champs, I would have to make a group of friends again. Right. And I did not want to do that. Right. Because that seemed like a pain in the ass, especially my senior year. Like, Dude, you by the way, you flourished there. Your confidence came back. At a hundred percent. That was amazing to watch. It was really, really. Now I didn't know you were smoking so much weed before school, but only my senior year, junior year, second semester, junior year, my first semester there, I got straight A's. Yeah, that's true. That did not last long. So tell me, was there, is there anything looking back? You still think we made a bad choice? Anything where you, where you were like, this was anything you can think about. Where when you have kids, you're like, I'm going to do that a little differently. Grounding me for a whole summer. Well, do you really think that was a bad move or you just didn't like it? Oh, I just hated it. Oh, yeah. Then, then that doesn't count. I just I, disagree with it. You said disagree with. That's what I disagree with. I disagree that I got grounded for a whole summer. Do you disagree with it because you think it was the wrong choice or just because you didn't like it? Hey man, everybody steals weed from their parents at one time. I don't feel like that's they should get grounded true. from the whole for a whole. Everybody does not. Not do everybody, that. but th there's a certain there's a certain couple. I don't feel like I should have gotten grounded for a whole that's summer. That's not for why that. you got grounded for the whole summer. It wasn't the vape. No. Did you get grounded for stealing my weed? Yes. No, oh, you should have been. Yeah, that, I that, work. I work hard I'm, for that. I'm, weed. I'm fine for a little bit, not the whole fucking summer, man. Yeah, yeah. Like that was my summer before my senior year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't let you outside, huh? Just the backyard. Or my phone. <laughs> I didn't I didn't have my phone at all that summer nah, either. Dude. Yeah, dude. You, you're lucky you had anything. Yeah, you know what I used to do when you guys went to bed, though? Huh. I used to go into the living room. Remember that old desk we had in the living room that was just in the ra that random corner at yeah. the Matilda House? Yeah, that was my grandfather's desk. Yeah, mom always put her iPad in there. So when you guys went to bed, I would go out of my room. I would grab the iPad. I would bring it into my room. And I would log into all of my social media things that I remember passwords for. And also, if I turned on the Wi-Fi on the iPad, it just acted as I could text people. So I would text my girlfriend until I went to sleep. And then before I went to bed, I would turn, I would log myself out of all those apps and then bring the iPad back into the, the desk, put it there, and then... Sneaky fuck. Yeah. That's what happens when technology is present. I respect the, I respect the ingenuity. Oh, and also, I would, I, 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 before you guys took my phone away, I memorized, or not memorized, but I wrote down all of my friends' phone numbers. And so that I could text them, but then also like I would call them on the home phone. Well, we still had a home phone. Yeah, you guys had a landline until I was like twenty. Yeah, your mom like we used to have a landline now. Why? Your mom likes landline, dude. Just in case shit goes down, she's gonna want to be. I don't. But for, I for what? If shit goes I, down, she has a cell phone. I don't know, man. What if the cell towers go down? Then the landline is is the landline gonna work if the cell towers are down? I I don't know how no, that works. No, I'm pretty sure the answer to that is no. I don't know how any of that works. All I know is that she wants a landline whenever we So she landlines it, dude. She also has an AOL email. She does have an AOL email. The only two people I know left with an AOL email are your mom and Chelsea Handler. 
Uh, they mom, both, is the, mom is the only one I know still. Your Chelsea has the same email when I met her pre pre your mom. You know, Jeez. I met her before I met your mom. Yes. And so like that email is still Yeah, yeah, crazy. That's ridiculous. AOL, I wonder if they're still paying for their internet. I can't believe AOL still has usable service. I wonder how many people still have an AOL email. Hey, I, if you have an AOL and you see this, DM me. I really would like to know how I, many of you have an AOL account. I bet you we could Google how many AOL emails are active. Let's make a get. I'm going to make a bet. I'm, I'm going to make Google a guess. It? Okay, hold on. AOL. So it's got to be people around my age and older, maybe a few years younger. They still have AOL. Is there an answer before I guess? Is there one? Is there an answer? Don't give it to me. Y yeah, there is an answer. Yeah. Okay. I, well, this was as, as of 2021. Okay. Active AOL emails, right? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I thought you were speaking rhetorically. I thought you were just talking out loud to yourself. No, I don't know. If you I know was just, this is the podcast. Well, so right, right. But, speak, some, but, some, but sometimes yeah. you talk to yourself where you go, oh, yeah, that should be right. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, you just talk to yourself. Okay. So. Active AOL emails. I am going to say. Well, okay. So hold, hold on. Before you do that, like this, this doesn't give me like active AOLs. It says it's a certain amount of people paying for a monthly subscription fee. Still? Su subscription service fee for AOL. But instead of dial up access, these subscribers get technical, technical support and identity theft software. Okay, perfect. I'll, it's people who are still paying for AOL. Mom doesn't pay for AOL, does she? I. It, it's possible. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say ooh, 5 million people. Way less. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Way less. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, 1 million people. A little more. You're pretty close. 1.3. A little more. 1.5. Yeah, there you go. Well, uh, there are still 1.5 million people paying a monthly subscription service fee for AOL. Listen, dude, anytime I just want everyone to listen in anytime you're like something weird is happening or people are doing something stupid and you're like, who the fuck is still doing that? Just know there's still 1.5 million people paying for AOL. I bet your mom's but on that, that list. But that was also May, May 3rd of 2021. Do you think they've gotten smarter since then? Well, I have something as of May 4th, 2021, yeah. which is really strange that it's the day after. Um, the uh, Is AOL email being discontinued? The iconic American online brand, the gateway to the web in its early days, is officially no more. The brand will be phased out in Verizon's $5 billion fire sale of its media assets consisting of AOL and Yahoo to Apollo Global Management. Dude, announced. you used to get this AOL disk in the mail. I remember when I had my Earthlink email and I oh, got, I remember I got that, that Earthlink web. I remember that. Earthlink remember email. my computer came. I forget what, it, what kind of computer it was, but it came in the cow box. Oh yeah. 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 Was yeah. It yeah. Called Gateway. Yeah. Gateway is what it's called. Yeah. I get, I get the computer and I wrote, dude, you know what I wrote on that computer? I wrote fairly normal. The one I wrote the one man show that got us out of the luxury apartments. We used to live in this place in Hollywood. Yeah, man. We used to live in this place in Hollywood where, oh, this dude, this apartment complex was so bananas. So the people, the, the apartment next to us were these, this lesbian couple who sold Omaha steaks, but they were heroin addicts. Wait, did they sell the steaks out of their apartment? I, I know that and was the steaks just a ploy for them to sell heroin. No, they did not sell heroin. Are you sure didn't they stuff the steaks with the heroin? They did not sell heroin. They, they, you could tell when they were on a kick because you would smell rotting meat from the neck, from next door. They would order a bunch of meat and they would get so fucked up. They would forget to, however, refrigerate it or, or just get it out. Right. Give it, give it to the people who bought it. Um, and one of the people who used to visit, okay. The original, uh, road rules, the original real world. Roadhouse. The second season of Real World. Okay. There was a guy on there named Tuck, who was like the original bad boy. It might be the first. It was the second Road Rules of uh, 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 Real World. And I don't know if he was doing heroin, but he was friends with those girls. 
We used to see him in the hallway every now and then. There were three drug dealers in the building. I'm not going to mention their names. Um, but the, I, I hope not. No. But, these but that two, also makes me feel like you still know them. I mean... It also makes me feel like one of them was you. No, 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 no. I was not dealing drugs. I was raising you guys. Now, I, I, I'd be lying to you if I had said I didn't stop over at their apartments a couple times, but... There was that woman on our floor that David Arquette was dating. So every now and then you'd walk down the hallway. David Arquette. David Arquette. Uh, Dewey from Scream. And oh, 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 got it, got it. Okay. Um, it, the, the whole building was bananas. It was like pandemonium. But Joe Diaz used to come by. That was the that was the apartment building that had that Rottweiler that was like. Oh, yeah. That one that was trained to kill. Oof, oh, this dude was like 135, 140 pounds. Just muscle. This guy used to feed him raw steak. I think he gave him, honestly, I think he gave him some testosterone. That's what you were telling me. He was jacked up. Jacked up. Can't even imagine that. But that was, man, that's where we sold peanut butter and jelly sandwiches out of. Yep. That luxury apartments was was really uh, a cr- like a crazy place. Yeah, I feel like every apartment right now in Hollywood is a crazy place. Like I lived in Hollywood for about two years during the pandemic, and it was just you saw that homeless encampment get lit on fire four times. It's so fucked up. I also saw I'm gonna I'm gonna I saw an individual. That's what I'm what I'm gonna say. They I saw an individual and a gentleman get out of the tent one of the tents one day and he got out and they're kind of in a screaming match. And I, I had a window, right? Remember like one of my whole walls was a window, but also right outside my window was the homeless encampment. So I could see everything that was happening. Right. It was like free TV with no internet. Right. I could, it was you just called me one night on FaceTime and you were like, look at this. I'm like, what is it? It was a fire. Yeah. It was just crazy fire. Like they just caught up in flames. But also you remember the, that tent material, that nylon yeah. catches flame. And when it flames, it goes hot. Like that's because they're cooking over there and shit. Yeah. They were cooking inside the tents. But so also like when the, these individuals got out of the tent, he, the, this person was like, Hey, don't come any closer to the guy. And the guy was like, Oh yeah. What are you going to do about it? And they turned around and grabbed a two by four off the wall. And they were like, if you come any closer, I'm going to hit you in the head with this piece of wood. And the guy was like, yeah, right. He took one step closer and she swung it at him. You know, that sound like was it that little Asian woman. No, no, no. Little Asian woman. She couldn't throw any punches, but she got punched a couple times. She was insane. That dude. She got hit a she bunch of times. Tough. She was tough. She she was tough enough to get slapped around a couple times. Yeah, for sure. Dude, yeah. But uh, she was also she had a knife. She had a huge knife all the time. No, she didn't. Yo, know, dude. Remember I told you Remember I told you when I, on a, I went up to your place one day. And I'm like, that Asian woman is downstairs, and she's just walking up and down that thing with a knife. Might, might have been a different Asian woman. Oh, yeah. Because the old Asian, that Asian woman that just screamed constantly, who yeah. I also think was a racist, because she only ever got into fights with with other people. Like, I, But she was also, I don't think she spoke English. Yeah. Because she was also always screaming in a different language. Yeah, that makes it harder. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, these individuals, she was like, I'm going to hit you with this two by four if you don't, if you take another step. And he said, oh, yeah. And he took another step. And you know that sound like when a piece of wood hits another piece of wood, but oh, also yeah. something hollow and it's like, yeah. donk. That's what his head sounded like. Cause she swung it and hit him right over the top of the head. And then he kind of like stumbled away and she went, they went over to them, flipped his shirt over his head and then just started beating the shit out of him. And was just wailing him in the with middle the of bat? the street. No, no, no. With her hands. She was, there. Was, she was just beating the shit out of this dude oh, in the middle shit. of the street. And then I was like, what's happening? And then I looked, I panned the camera down. There was just a shopping cart under my window on fire. It was nuts. Yeah. What a nuts place to live. You know, that, that, um, I never want to live in the heart of Hollywood ever again. No, that place pre COVID was like, oh, this place is on the up. It was a lot of young people moving in, a lot of stores opening up. Yeah. Well, I I would say pre COVID, pre 2019. 2019, Hollywood started to fall apart. Nah. They were still putting so much money into it, man. It was clean. You walk down that street now, there's literal human feces on yeah. the sidewalk. Well, you know now also, like after COVID, they probably did it every night, but now like specifically, or especially during COVID, they have a dude who gets up at like five in the morning and he walks all the way up and down Hollywood Boulevard, power washing it, spraying the whole entire sidewalk because they're, they're trying to keep it clean, right? But it's not really clean if you're just spraying water on it. It's just moving all the shit around. Yeah, but they're just trying to keep people off the streets. I, I will tell you, I'm really stuck. I'm, I'm caught in between 
I really am caught in between when it, with the homeless stuff in LA. Here's what I'm caught between. Me too. First and foremost, I'm caught between being a human being yep. and wanting people to be treated like human beings. And like there are extenuating circumstances and you know, mental illness and drug addiction, why people end up on the street. I'm also a cop. I'm also a dude who paid taxes there. It's one of the reasons I left. And like, I felt bad for small businesses, man, because say we're out in front of this place right here and this is LA and these people are trying to run their business and have customers come in and out. People don't want to come in and out. There's no rule against a homeless dude camping out in front of this store. And you know, we would maybe we pull up and we're like, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to walk past that yeah. shit. I'll find another place. And so the small business owner who is paying taxes now has a, like a, a dude sleeping in the tent in front, you know, taking a dump on the sidewalk and nobody uses his business. So right, like, but also some people also, some of the homeless people are very aggressive. So it's like people are also getting hurt because there are certain dudes yeah, just going nuts. So I'm caught in between all that shit, right? There's got to be a better way. And here's the thing in LA, the, here's the truth. I think if I'm not mistaken, is that there are so many open beds. Oh, there's, there's, a, there is enough open. There are enough open rooms and open buildings in the state of California to house all most of the homeless. Yeah, but dude, that's not the issue. The issue is this is what I've been told. If you're on the street in LA, it's because you want to be. Because in the shelters in LA, you can't use, you can't drink, you can't drug. And that's the rule. So a lot, there are a lot of open beds because people are like, nah, I'm doing drugs. I'd rather be on the street. Right. And, and so I, that's where I'm like, do I, f- I don't know. I, that's where I'm stuck between like being a human. I do want what's best for you. And I'd love you to live a fucking good life. But yo, I pay taxes and I pay in this life too. And so like, there's gotta be. There's got to be a better way. Yeah, that that city right now is it's a bummer. It's a shithole, dude. In the '90s, when we were there, it was such a fucking different place. I mean, I was I was raising you guys, and my, all my brothers and cousins were right. there, and so it was different and a different vibe. But yeah, it's a big bummer. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely unfortunate to see what the city you see the city you love and you grew up in just become something completely different. Are you, what are you looking forward to doing in Vegas? Enjoying the quiet. Yeah. Yep. Already doing it, but enjoying the quiet has been really nice. Um, You're going to go see some magic. Yeah. Your your mom loves magic too. My girlfriend loves magic. Come on. You, she loves magic. Yeah. Your mom too. Uh, That's not my, it's not my thing. Not my thing. Not my thing. But the one that we're going to tomorrow is called smokus pocus yeah and so it's like a magic store store magic show that incorporates weed in it so i'm excited to see how that goes um i'll yeah. be super high for it um but i mean I'm, i don't know how what they're gonna entail like are you just gonna make like the weed in my pocket disappear go to your pocket like i don't think he's making weed disappear but if it's something that includes smoking i'm not allowed to smoke inside right like it's nothing that i can ingest or but he's consume I, i'm assuming they're Assuming most people walking in are going to be a little medicated. No, no, 100%. But his act has to do with weed. That's the whole point. Mm, I can't wait to see what it is. I'm about. really curious. So, like, but it's, it was only here for, it was only in Vegas for six weeks. So I think we got like the last week of shows. Are there any shows you want to go see in Vegas? I'm going to go, I want to go see Beatles Love again. Yeah, me too. I'd like to see and, some Cirque. And uh, Iman wants to see Absinthe. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go see that. And I think my friend Casey works in Absinthe. Set it up. I think so. I mean, um, what else? Uh, oh, we want to go see Chris Angel. Oh, yeah. It's all magic, huh? Yeah. She wants to go see every magic show in Vegas. Okay. Well, that should be pretty easy to set up. I don't think it's going to be easy because there's like a gazillion magic shows in Vegas. The only person I probably won't go see is Piff the Magic Dragon. Why not? He's funny. I like his chihuahua. That's about it. Yeah, it he's sounds, funny. sounds dirty, but it's not. He's funny. Yeah. I'd, I'd go for the dog, I think. Are you not going for any funny in your magic? I guess it all depends. Uh, magic wasn't my choice in the first place. Right. She'll go. She'll want to see Piff. She'll want to go because of the Chihuahua. Yeah. That's why. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I, I'd love to see some some more Cirque shows too. I am definitely want to go see a Raiders game this year because I want to go into Allegiant. Also, I've never been to a professional football game ever. I'm, I think Taylor Swift's coming. I might go see that concert. Uh, Count me out. Why, dude? 
You can count me in for Drake and Twenty One when Drake and Twenty One Savage when they're there in September. I'm hard, fucking, I'm in a, for that. A fucking hard pass for me. Great, you can get tickets for Taylor Swift, and then you can get me tickets for Twenty One and Drake. That'd be I, great. I, Thanks. For, Appreciate it in advance. I'm not even a Taylor Swift fan, but I hear she puts on a great show. Don't like any of her music. What? That sounds like hater shit. I probably, I'm not gonna lie. I probably am a Taylor Swift hater. Yeah, that sounds like hater. Hundred percent. I'm just, I'm just not a Taylor Swift fan. But what if, you just don't like who she is? Yeah. Who she, who you think she is? I should say. Sure. So then that because that you did that with Bieber too. Remember, you were Bieber hater, dude. Yeah, he put out good music though. Yeah, dude. Oh, you you switched up. You hated Bieber. I think you hated Bieber. Well, but I also the girls that you were running around thought he was super cute. Yeah, that's true too. That's why I copied his hairstyle. Yeah, you did. Um, but I also think like for me, I found a liking for Bieber because there's a certain album that he put out that was during COVID and it was not my breakup album, but it was like, it was something that helped push the emotion out of me in order for me to move forward. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that album helped me a lot, but also good album, good features too. Travis Scott's on there. Um, who else is on there? There's a uh, little Dickies on there. Post Malone's on there. Um, a couple good ones. He's, he's got a, I it's think I album. brought this up to you before. I don't remember my when I first started listening that so many people the music, so many people were hopping on other people's songs. Yeah, see, you had said that before, and then I understand that, but also like I named a whole bunch of them. Snoop yeah. Snoop was featured, did a lot of features, if I'm correct. Yeah, but it's like every album, every album. Like it's, I, it's because it's what the people want to see. Every album, every song, you have to have somebody else. Like I don't remember like KRS One having people. No, and it, not and not everybody. Like look, here's the thing: since J Cole put out, well, so J Cole in 2014 put out Forest Hills Drive, right? Yeah. Forest Hills Drive went certified platinum. The first, but he had he had somebody with him on every song. What's that called? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Oh, he did. Cole did his own album by himself, no features, platinum. Features, he did right. that then a second album in a row and did it again. And then he decided to have a couple features on his most recent album. Um, but not, not a lot of artists could do that nowadays, but also it's because I feel like it's a lot of supply and demand for consumers. Cause for me, like when I hear before, so Drake and 21 Savage just dropped a collab album. So it's literally just those two on the whole entire track. But that was the, that was like the point of the album, right? It was like a collaboration. Whenever you hear a different Drake in 21 song, like you're like, God, these dudes go like they never miss. Like these are dudes who always when you put them on a track together, they always hit. So people look for that on certain albums. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I like it. You know, it's crazy. It also helps me find new artists that I like. Cause sometimes they'll put an artist on there that I've never heard of. And let me, then I'll listen to that. And I like that song. Let me I ask like you something. Artist. You, you send me a ton of artists and I like a majority of them. Mm -hmm. What is it about Drake that I just can't get into? I feel like for you, he's too mainstream. I feel like for you, he's too. And by the way, guys, this is not me. The one of the best things about art is that it's perspective. It's subjective. Yeah. And so like this dude is wildly successful and will have more success than I've ever had in my entire life. And this is not right. This is just, However, not, it's just not my thing. Yeah. You're allowed to have an opinion. Yeah. And so it can like, be wrong, but you're allowed to have an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> who, who I'm trying to think somebody that I really like that you just have not got behind at all. The Eagles. I don't really like the Eagles. I mean, I like them, but they're not like top one good song. You and Dan Wolf are back. Are, ba, 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 ba. That's as most as I can do until we can't. What is that? It. What was that noise? I was singing the tune to their only good song. That was Hotel California. I couldn't do more of it because we get we get taken down. I'll tell you something right now. Not only did you could you have done more of it, you didn't do any of it. Those noise. Ba, 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 ba. That sounds like an SOS. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, that last part was the first <laughs> part. That yeah, last you know three that's notes. pretty much what it sounds like for the entire song. It, honestly, it's basically the same six chords. That's what I'm saying. I I, I was I was in the ballpark. Yeah, wasn't, you, that wasn't too far off. I, I might do that song tonight. I haven't done that in a long time. Oh, I like that parody song. That one makes me laugh. I would have to remember how to. We're going to give that guitar. By the way, guys, we've been giving away a couple guitars this weekend. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, if you're, well, this won't be out in time for you guys to know about the late show. But if you're at the Saturday Night Late Show, I always give a guitar away at the last show of the weekend. Yep. And if it's a theater show, I give the guitar away every show. Depending and, on how many shows we have and how many guitars you have. Right. But at the theater shows, I'm giving a guitar away outside of Kane's because the guitar didn't get there. Right, 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 right. But it, I give it away and the, I just don't give it away at every show at the clubs because I'm doing five shows. Right. Right. Makes but, sense. But uh, tonight, we're giving one away. Oh, yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. I, th- I got to tell you, man. These, um, I think I'm getting like real, like these late show, early flight. Can you do me a favor and go ahead and sniff into the microphone a couple more times? Yeah. That, you know, that doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> Holy. Can we do it one more time? Shit. Oh my fucking God. Those kind of noises. Great at my very, it's not even that. It's just a. <laughs> Like we're this is a, an audio medium, and you're you are. It's not that. Now <laughs> it sounds you, like now it. you just sound like oh. sound like a dog. Yeah, it was the other ones where you yeah you just decided to sniffle in directly into the microphone. My God, what were you saying? Let me just say this about Jacob. The thing, the difference between Jacob and any of the other, my other kids, Trevor, Caitlin, and especially Beth. Jacob picked up a trait from me where if I know something bothers you, I'm going to low key do it around you a lot because it's just something that's fun for me to watch you get annoyed gradually. Yeah. I just, it like, and I had done it a couple times and I kind of noticed him just be like, I'm not even going to say anything about it. And I knew I was under his skin. So I just kept doing it, you know, every, every, every little bit just to wait until I got the reaction. And I did. Yeah. So. You didn't just get a reaction from me. You got a reaction from everyone listening to this fucking podcast. They just turned it off because they've been hearing you fucking nose huff. Nose huff. I don't know if that's the right term. Nose huff. I don't think so. But it it's been aggressive. Yeah, it's been aggressive. It's yeah. cold here. <laughs> it's chilly here. I don't know if you know this, Michigan, but it's springtime. Yeah, it's supposed to be warm. Not sure why it's 50 degrees. Some Midwest shit. Yeah, the Midwest weather is... By the way, that's the reason we moved out of Nashville. Yeah, it's the reason I've stayed on the West Coast my entire life. Yeah, the reason we moved out of Nashville... Guys, the reason... People are like, you didn't like Nashville? Loved Nashville. Hated the weather. Nobody told us that the weather was like... No one told you it was going to snow. Or just be wet and cold and no sunshine and like... Yeah, it was rough sauce. For your mom and I, we like it hot and dry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd rather sweat than freeze. Yeah. That's always been my prerogative. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And I am sticking to it. Sweat than... Yeah. yeah. Sweat than freeze? Fuck yeah. 100%. There's, because also like, it's a sticky, it's a humid sweat. So like, right. you know, like it's a tough choice. Do you want the, do you want your, the back of your leg to sweat in pants? You know, when you're sitting down Oh yeah. or do you want, uh, what's worse than that is the bare skin sweat against like something leather. Oh, and you stick to oh. it. Oh, you know what I've started noticing? So. When I play video games, yeah. I, you know, you get into it, right? And so sometimes you're in a pretty intense moment or like, you know, things happen, heart rate races, focus enhances, right? So I play at my desk, pretty much sitting in a chair, and I play with my, my controller in my lap. Mm-hmm. I've started to notice that when I get up, I have sweat stains on the that inside of my hilarious. thighs from my hands sitting on my, th- my thighs because when I play... I get so sweaty and nervous that my hands sweat. I always end up wiping my hands, but I looked down one day and I was like, what is that? And I looked down and there was just two identical (laughs) side palm prints of sweat on my legs. And I was like, damn, I'm about to change before we leave. I can't walk out with crotch sweats. You ever have to pee in a bottle? Not while playing uh, video games, but while driving. What? 
Why have you peed in the bottle? Were you in the passenger seat or driver's? Passenger. So the person driving didn't want to pull over? Hit me. Why were you doing I've done that before. McKay well, and I, when we were driving you and mom to Nashville, got stuck in three hours of traffic in that giant truck. You remember? Oh, that's right. We couldn't move. Past an exit already. And if we got off the exit, there was no way we were getting back on the freeway. So I peed in a bottle. Yeah, I mean, the road trips is when you pee in a bottle. By the way, so did he too, and he was driving. Sorry, McKay. Ratted you out on that one. Did you pee in different bottles? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're in separate pee bottles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, a, was, there, was too much, there was too much pee for me to definitely him do anything else with it. That's a risky, it's a risky move because if you go off even a little bit, then the truck smells like pee for the rest of the ride. Yeah, or, yeah, every, everything does, so... You, but also we were stuck like we were stationary yeah, so I'm with you. and also that big cab in the truck like i was able to macgyver like a like a little like to pee into a funnel down, down into it nope mm, you went straight hole whoa <laughs> <laughs> but you went straight top of the bottle yep yeah that's not easy no nope. you, you know when we perform well it's not like i aimed like i was peeing into a cup at like the doctor's office yeah that's that's unfortunately one of those things where it's got to be like uncomfortably close yes right so, on it yeah yeah, yeah. or like in yeah 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 Yeah. it's the Um, only way to make sure that you don't smell like piss after that's right um you know when we performed in guantanamo bay which we met somebody last night at the show who was at the guantanamo bay show amazing but it it was when i was still we were doing chelsea's show and it was me uh chris frangiola sarah colonna chelsea and um the plane that they put us on from I think Miami to Guantanamo was just this. I don't know how to explain it, but the bathroom, it was just like this little, not a passenger plane. It was like, but it was tiny. And I I don't remember if we were on makeshift chairs or like barely seats, but the bathroom was behind this little curtain, which was like right here, two, two feet away where you were just peeing or pooping in a bucket. Oof. Yeah, it was a rough sauce. Did I ever tell you about that trip? No. I mean, I feel like we talked about it a little bit, but I feel like you were in Guantanamo Bay. There wasn't very much to the trip. Well, Did you get to see any of the prisoners? Yeah. Ooh. Or we went. We took a tour of the jails. Did they throw anything at you? Um, they didn't, but the guy warned us that they could throw feces. Um. That doesn't shock me. Yo, dude, Guantanamo was crazy, man. It was so cool. We landed. First of all, we probably shouldn't have brought ecstasy, but we did. That is, I just don't even, hold on. I have questions for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a different. Well, not questions. Now I understand why I was dumb enough to sneak drugs to Cabo. Different. No, not different. You different. went to Guantanamo Bay. That is like a military base in Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We but, were at a resort with a bunch of other white people in Mexico. Yeah, 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 yeah. Such a huge difference. One, we're not passing through customs. We're not. We're just flying on a right into the military base. Okay. We're not getting checked. There's no dogs. I got lucky. Right. You got fucking lucky as a 14-year-old bringing weed across the Mexico border. 16. 16. It, that would have been disastrous. No, don't thumbs up. Don't, don't follow what I did. Don't do that. That would have been fucking disastrous. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. And as a 16 year old wouldn't, and none of us, uh, actually, I don't think any of us knew that the person who brought drugs and it wasn't any of us. It was Chelsea's assistant at the time. We didn't know she was bringing drugs. I just uh, also feel like who wants to do who wants to do ecstasy in Guantanamo Bay? What do you mean? It feels like it's a terrible place to do it. Well, we were all together hanging out, you know? No, no, I understand that. It's just like, you know, scenery wise. Like I feel like when I do a hallucinogens, where you are and who you're with are very important. For sure. Not a so, hallucinogen though, just kind of a feel good fun. Yeah, c- pretty close to a hallucinogen though. Mm, no. Your co- your so. your colors aren't like vibrant and more draggy throughout the night. Maybe maybe you like the lights, but they don't. I don't think they change that much. Yo, know, for those of you who do it more often than he does, DM me. I'd like to know. Well, I haven't done it in so long. That's what so, I'm saying. Yeah, maybe yeah. it might be different, but but it just seems like not a place I'd want to do drugs. Yeah, the Guantanamo Bay show. 
it was pouring rain. Frangiola got in a gorilla costume outfit and ran behind me, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> pouring rain, mosquitoes everywhere. McDon the McDonald's ran out of food. So we only could get fries. You know, they're on an island, so they got to wait for things to come in. At least you had the fries. We had the fries. Um, I, we went out. I will say I saw the biggest fucking iguanas I've ever seen. Just bigger than the ones there. we saw in Australia? Those like wild ones in the park? Yeah, dude. Like the, that one these I wild ones went around the island. Massive. Um, we saw a tiny little octopus. I remember out by the water. Octopi. Um, it was pretty crazy, man. Like the experience for me, seeing those the the facilities were was eye opening, but one of the facilities was it was just like yo know, there was the guys were playing Xbox and and um, you know eating Cheetos and drinking Pepsi and all these things and that was a facility with one group of men right and the other facility we weren't really allowed to go over they were like these those are the those are the people that we you don't want to mingle with interesting and and these the guys over on this side were just you know i'm they weren't obviously w would rather be out of a prison but still criminals uh i it, it just all depends in some on, way or another yeah it just depends on on where you lean right what your thoughts of guantanamo are um but they were the guys were like yeah we found that when they got creature comforts they were just you know chilling yeah yeah yeah. they played soccer and they yeah it was a uh, interesting yeah it was interesting i i'm not sure how much i'm i mean it was years ago i just don't i don't want to get into too much because i don't know how much you're supposed to say but we went and met all the people there it was amazing and and the people who ran the island was amazing and they gave us a tour of everything of when people first started getting there and then the new facilities got built and right so and and i think it's a forgotten place as far as entertainers going down to perform for them right yeah but definitely when we were down there i was like who's the last entertainer that you had and they said bo bice i'm like the dude from american idol bummer yeah <laughs> although bo couldn't, bice, even, couldn't even get chris daughtry yo i think bo bice was your mom and i's first favorite you don't remember Bo Bice. I remember, I remember the name. Do you? Chris Daughtry is my favorite. He was your favorite ever, right? And I still think to this day, for a dude that didn't win American Idol, probably had the best career. I would go Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, too. I mean, it's one of those two. I guess it just depends. Daughtry's going to be at the M by your house in August. Do you want to go? Nope. Why not? Because I know three songs, and they've been putting out music for 10 years. Wait, name one song you know. Home. Home. That's. Home. I don't think that's him. To a place where oh, that's him. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's him. a hundred percent him. Yeah, yeah. Don't I, play with me. I was thinking PJ T PJ Tucker. That's that is a basketball player. Yeah. What's the name of the dude? AJ. No. PJ Rucker. No. That's also a basketball player. Maybe. No. Darius Rucker. Oh, oh, oh. He's a singer. Yeah. But what's the guy's name? I don't know. Remember his uh, uh, P. Thomas Hall? No. I'm just Pete's throwing. Almond Hall. What Not did you Pete's say? Pete's Almond. And by the way, let's get this out of the way. Wait, what did you say? What did you say? P. P. Thomas Hall. Oh, P. Thomas it. Hall. Um, you, you, your aggressive anti stance against Almond Joy is something that just needs to be talked about. No, it is nothing to be talked about. You can say anything you want about Almond Joys. If it's anything other than they're terrible, you're wrong. I think coconut is an acquired taste that happens as you get older, but the combo of coconut, bad, almond, and chocolate. Bad. Okay. You don't like almonds? You don't like almonds and you don't like a chocolate covered almond? I don't like them with coconut. I'm asking you if you like a chocolate covered almond. Oh, I like chocolate covered almonds. Okay. So eventually what will happen is, is your palate will become more sophisticated because right now you like fun dip and all that dumb shit. What do you think I am? Seven? You, I, do you not like fun dip? No. I haven't eaten a fun dip since I was like seven. You eat fun dip. <laughs> Say whatever you What's want. What's your candy? Candy of choice? Yeah. Like right now? Yeah. What's your candy? 
I'm not sure. I don't have a lot of candy in the house, in all honesty. I, I know, but like if you were going to pick a candy or a chocolate, because I guess Almond Joy is considered a chocolate. I'd probably say like a Sour Patch Kid or a Skittles. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. Hey, so, don't bag on it. You ate two bags of Skittles a night for sour, like three years. Sour Patch Kid yeah, is go ahead for and avoid that children. Question. You also uh, first like of all, that wasn't a question. I'm not sure if you know how grammar works. Yeah, go ahead and avoid the statement, though, because you did eat two bags of Skittles a night for like three years. I, I can't deny that. But yeah. all I'm saying is right now, Sour Patch Kids compared to an Almond Joy, you're going to find a grown-up eating an Almond Joy. You're going to find a, a grown-up grown eating... Human. A you're grown... You're going to find grown-ups eating Sour Patch Kids, too. Nah. Just wait. Wait till we get this back. By the way, I love a Sour Patch Kid. I, you're a grown-up. But you don't see a lot of five-year-olds eating Almond Joys. That's not their thing. I don't see anybody eating Almond Joys. Grown you know people. Why? Never. With their coffee. Zero. Yeah, and they Never. wipe their mouth with a $100 bill because they're eating an Almond Joy. No, they wipe it with a handkerchief because they're old. Because <laughs> <laughs> only old people have handkerchiefs in their pockets. And don't yeah. fight me on that. I'll tell you something else. A handkerchief is legit the grossest fucking thing. Yeah, here, like, like when, especially when someone tries to hand you their handkerchief, they're like, here, wipe your nose with already the shit I've wiped out of my nose Yo, today. Dude, my like, grandfather. What is wrong with you? I don't want to touch that shit. It, my grandfather, dude, and I know they call him the greatest generation, but get the fuck out of here. You're going to blow your nose, put it back in your pocket, take it out two hours later, blow it again, like, and fold it, like... Like nothing that happened makes a difference. Yeah. And then when I blow my nose, you're going to offer it. That's like, like, I understand your good intent behind it, but it's also like you're spreading disease. It's gross. Like keep that shit to yourself. It is. A also, when you blow your nose, just throw it out. Why are you keeping it hidden in your pocket? Why is like it a, in your pocket? Like, like, what is it for like a treat for later? Why, like what's, why is it? Why, why is no, it? No, no, your, no. Why is it in your pocket? You, a, a handkerchief. Much like a napkin, should ta not take more than one load. That sounds dirty, but it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it Yeah, <laughs> but it shouldn't take more than one load from your nose. That also sounds dirty, but it is. <laughs> I know you tried to rephrase it to make it sound less dirty, and you made it worse. So I'm just, just saying. So just yeah, just move on. Don't try to get it. <laughs> no, don't. I like the look. If you have like a a, a, a pocket square, yeah, fucking look great. It's different. But if pocket squares, you don't blow your nose in. They're yeah. just used for decoration. Right, right. But if you're blowing your nose and putting it back in your pocket. You're a gross person. Agreed. And, and there's no, there's no like argument. And I, and no. I think you're right. Like it wasn't seen as like a, you know, gentleman have a handkerchief and like, but that's like, and I know. Yeah. That's gross. Yeah. Don't that's like, that. I will tell you. And, and I understand the concept also behind reusable diapers and all that stuff, but I could never understand. I could never be like, yeah, you're going to poop in this. I'm just going to wash it. And then, Mm. Reusable diapers are affordable though. Like I get that. Like diapers and babies products are expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm on with that. I was. You I can make a washable material. I was. I w I guess for me, there's just something about once you shit on something, you just gotta throw it out. Yeah, I understand that. And it's more of unless a, it's like your shoes and you step in it, they're easily cleaned. No, that's more of a mental thing for me. You know that I threw those shoes away. I can't believe it. Yeah, dude. It's something about if there's poop on it, I want to start over. I've stepped in shit countless times, cleaned it yeah. each time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're telling me that if right now we walked outside and you stepped in shit in those shoes, you wouldn't clean them? Where is the shit? On the bottom of the shoe. No, it has not creeped up to the sole. So like, yeah. so like, can I see? Yeah. So you know how sometimes when you step on some shit, right? And you step on it and it like leaks up to the side. That's and it's it. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So not, not that, but also that's easier to clean than this because this you have to like get in grooves. Like, yo, I stepped in shit in a, four, in a one once and it looks like this. I had to go buy toothpicks so I could mm -mm. sit there. I cleaned my shoes for like an hour. Nah. Toothbrush also. Went and bought two separate toothbrushes that nope. I threw out right after that. No. Nope. But yeah, like, so, so. Right here is pretty easy, but like if it's here or here, here's my thing. I'm, I, I'm putting zero effort into cleaning the poop, right? So if I need a toothpick, it, I would rather throw it away. If that ever happens with these shoes, don't throw them out. Give them to me. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely would because I love these shoes so much. These shattered backboards are my favorite. Oh, okay. We got to just so you know. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So listen guys, um, you want me to give the rundown? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I mean, I no, we're good. I'm hungry. 
Me too. He's about to make us go do cryotherapy, which is my least favorite thing of all time. Yeah, dude. Get For fun, he makes me stand. Well, he said what he says is fun. He makes me stand in a cryo chamber where it's negative 160 degrees, and you sit there for three minutes and 15 seconds. It's not for fun. Why do I have you do it? He does it because he's a fun Nazi. Nope. No. No. Um, he does it because he says it's important to do things you don't like. It, that is not exactly. That, it's important to push yourself to do things that you don't like. That's exactly what you say. Yeah. It's important to do things that you don't like and endure them so you know mentally that you can withstand more than you think you can. That is super important in your life to make yourself uncomfortable and push yourself. Yeah, I feel like we could do it in a way where I'm warm. Like like what? Like a sauna is uncomfortable. Yeah, you could do sauna too, but that's 45. You want to do 45 minutes instead of three? No, but I feel like a sauna seems more relaxing than a fucking cryo. Listen, dude, you could do a sauna, but that's 45 minutes. You'd make me do 45 minutes in a sauna? What are you going to do? 20? No, dude, that's not what a sauna is. It's 45 minutes. The point of this shit, dude, is, is like... You suffering or not even suffering, but difficult things or things you don't like are important to do in your life. And so I, if you're on the road with me, that's the deal. You're going to have to eat a certain way when you're on the road with me. You're going to have to hit the gym every day if you're on the road with me. And you're going to have to hit cryo and do some shit you don't like. That's how you get paid. That's not how I get paid. That's not how you get paid. I get paid because I do work. You do work. I do work. You definitely do work. But one of the things you also have to do is do shit that I do, which you hate. And mainly, I think that's just a bonus for him because he likes to torture me. I do like to torture you, but this is actually not about torturing you. This is all about you finding out about yourself. Right. Yo, you know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. So I wore this hoodie the other day, and I obviously was rolling a blunt in it because I'm looking at it, and it catches, like, lint and whatnot, and there are just specks of weed just sitting in this arm. Because, like, when I roll, like, I wipe my hands off, right? So there's just, like, this whole arm is just covered in just random pieces of green. Yeah, that is... I wonder if it's on this side, too. That is a fuzzy hoodie. It's warm. I wore it because it's cold. Um, All right, guys. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates, but... Here's what we got coming up that you need to know. Uh, we, I got it. No, I got it. I got okay. it. Next week we're off. Thank God. Nice, nice break. Yeah. But the week after that, we are in Miami from the third to the fourth. Hey, you have no idea when they're listening to this, so you got to give just dates. Okay, that's June third and fourth. Um, we will be in Miami for two nights, and then we uh, the two weeks after that, I'm pretty sure we have off. Yeah. And then. And then we're in Columbus, I believe, the last weekend in June. I don't know the exact dates for that. It's not the last weekend because that bumps up against June 30th and July 1st. But I believe it's the 23rd, 24th, 25th, right around there. Okay. See, boss, uh, we're coming back. Yeah, man. Those shows will 100% sell out. Yep. So comedianjoshwolf.com for tickets. The shows in Miami will also sell out. Those will be a little bananas. Um, if you're interested in seeing a mushroom show, come to the Friday Late Show. Um, I do some material, but mostly it's loosey goosey and we have a good time. Yep. Um, it's a ton of fun. Um, so comedian Joshua for tour dates. The second season of family tussle is, is close on the way guys. If you like this podcast and reading the comments, um, on the YouTube channel have been amazing. Uh, and thank you so much for leaving them. But if you like this podcast, I know you're listening. I see the downloads. Um, and uh, for those of you who have left a a um, review on iTunes, we appreciate it. But if you could, it would help so much to leave a review of the podcast, rate it, subscribe. That would be amazing. Um, I'm Josh Wolf Comedy on all my socials. Um, I've decided what I'm going to do on my socials to torture Jacob. You may have seen a post of, him sleeping and me putting him in a lot of different positions. Whoa. Um, in the backgrounds and all that shit. It was a ton of fun, but there's going to be more of that. But come see us on the road. What do you want to say? Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Um, yeah, man. Come see us on the road. We're having some fun. Um, shows are only getting better. You know what I'm saying? We are very excited for every city that we go to. And we thank you guys for coming out and leaving your house to come see us. Um, it's always very humbling. Um, and this weekend is a big, uh, 
a big big proof of that for sure what do you mean like big proof of how grateful we are that people are showing up and and coming out and that we're on the list their list to come out and like you know leave their house to come see yeah it's because we both know that our lists are pretty short yeah 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 um so thank you guys again uh, and without you guys, none of this would be possible. So go do something nice for somebody else today. We love you. Yeah, you say that every time. That's the point. That's my sign off. Yeah, that's your sign. I guess should I think of a sign off? No, you don't have to. But I feel like it's you know it's one of us should, and it obviously has to be me. All right, listen, guys. Uh, we love you. We'll see you out there. Hey, man, podcast. Tune in. We'll see you next week. Later. This is.